All right, y'all, this is Billy and William from Permapastors Farm. It's that time again, and you know what that is, compost making time. Folks, we did an 18-day compost pile before, but in truth, it wasn't as detailed as we need it to be because there are a bunch of people out there asking questions about it, things that we just, frankly, neglected to tell you. So we're going to do it differently this time. We're going to do it almost in a vlog format meaning that we're gonna start this pile today. We're gonna to show you all the components, how to put it all together, how long to make your cage, all those things. We're gonna show you how we do it today. And um, by the time we're done, you're gonna have questions, no doubt, but we're probably gonna answer a lot of them on the front end, having already done this video before. So we're gonna do it this time, but first time out, we're gonna talk about the components, which in this case, folks, so, so this is going to be a focus on making 18-day compost with animal bedding. Before, we did it with a combination of a bunch of stuff, but people have been asking, how do I make it with animal bedding? How do I factor in the manure already being on the brown? Right, so, so in we're this, going to focus on that. Well, in this case, this is where the pigs were in the permaculture barn um, before we got them out. Now, before then, we've had a combination. There's still some residual cow poop in here. There's sheep manure. There's tons of chicken manure and tons of pig manure. It's all, we got an entire ecosystem worth of manure right here in this stall. And this is where we housed them basically over the winter. So as you can imagine, um, it's gotten quite large. Now in this case is where I'm standing from the from grade, let's call it, to the top of this pile, in some places is maybe a foot and a half. Now there's wood chips, there's what I mean, what's that in here? There's straw, There's wood chips, wood chips, straw, hay, manure, a little bit of everything in here. So, we're going to take this now. This would ordinarily be a waste stream in most cases, folks. This is why this is the beauty of permaculture because you don't have to take this and just think it's a waste stream. I don't know what else to do with it. Well, in a lot of cases, what we've done before is we've taken this directly and we've dressed trees, used it as a mulch directly around the trees. As long as you stick it right on top, don't try to mix it in. You're going to cause yourself problems. You can use it that way, but if you want compost, you're going to do what we're about to do today. So folks, by and large, this, along with what else we have over there, which is going to be basically grass clippings, is going to make the backbone of what we have going here. But what you see also is some leftover, you got to have some means to make this pile, right? Well, this is what we're going to use. We got this leftover wire from when we did the fence up front. And this is that, um, not welded wire, but it's uh, woven wire. Woven wire fence. So we're going to use this as a means to hold everything together. So first off, we're going to measure this out and we're going to show you how we determine how big to make this cage. All right, here you go, folks. We cut this off at 12 feet long, which is gonna give us a diameter from here to there of about four feet, and it's also four feet tall, okay? Now, that's considerably more than what we need. We only need a cubic yard. This is close, getting close to two cubic yards worth of material, but it can't be more than three, right? So, we got this cage cut. All we're gonna do is tie it in here at the end, just fold it on itself, then we're gonna to move to the next step. All right, so once you have your cage in place, the first thing you're gonna do is wet the ground where you're gonna put your material. How wet do you get it? Is it saturated quite well? Yeah. Folks, I'm asking him because on this homestead, He's about as good as it gets when it comes to compost making. He went off to Australia and learned under Jeff Lawton for quite a while on how to do this stuff. And there's times where I'm the subject matter expert, there's times Michelle is, and there's times when he is. And this is when he really, really shines. He shines in so many areas, but this is where all of us take our cues from him. Even though he's taught me how to do it the way they did it in Australia, there's little nuanced things that you can't possibly learn unless you really put your hands on it and work at it. 
<laughs> All right, so the cage is built, four by four, and the ground's wet. So what's next? So the next step is the carbon layer. And in our case, it's animal bedding. And that's gonna be your first and last step. So you want a carbon bottom and a carbon top. Now, how thick does it have to be? That is up to you. You can do a bunch of thin layers or a bunch of thick layers. Cool. But it's like after the first flip, it's all gonna get mixed up anyways, so. That's how we're that. starting, y'all. All right, now it's time to put foot to butt. So here it is. He's got a little bit of that mucky looking, you know, combination of carbon and poop and everything else. That's his carbon layer. He's going to put it down. But folks, one of the big mistakes I made in trying to make this long ago before he knew how to make it perfectly was that I never put enough water in it. Is what I thought was enough water was nowhere close to enough. You're going to have to saturate this stuff. He's going to start it down there and I'm going to work it over with this hose. And it is way more wet than you possibly can imagine. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, ideally, all the water you're ever gonna need, you wanna to try to put into this thing right now. Now, stay in there to the end of it because it's all gonna make sense. And as we, as this whole thing unfolds, it's gonna make even more sense. But now while he's over there getting another load, I gotta constantly, this thing needs so much water that I need to keep working on it the entire time because as, dry, as wet as you think you got this, it ain't wet enough. All right, we got a layer of the brown material down. Now it's time for this stuff. So why don't you explain where you got it? This is just grass that we needed off the side of the driveway. Yeah, so ordinarily we'd have the sheep go all the way up to the edge of it. This time, not so much, or we didn't leave them there long because we knew we were gonna do this. So we're gonna take this and add, how much are we gonna put in it? About an equal measure of what we got? Yeah, about the same amount. And we're gonna keep spraying it the whole time, right? Yep. All right, here we go. Hopefully y'all can hear me over all this. I'm spraying basically nonstop as he's getting the next load. This stuff is just running out of the bottom already. And that's cool, that's what you want. He's about to go get some more brown. All right, next component we're putting in here, you don't necessarily have to have it, but we save it. Remember, this is a permaculture farm. We don't waste anything. So what we got in these buckets, all of our dogs are on an all egg diet. Now in there, along with those eggshells, is coffee, coffee grounds, you know, um, coffee filters. So we're gonna put that in here now. Can we do that, son? Yeah, the coffee, the ground coffee is going to act as an activator, which is going to kind of kickstart your decomposition in your pile. Some of the other activators you can use are like comfrey, uh, nettle, urine, stuff like that. Something high in nitrogen to kind of kickstart the, the process. 
Right, so we're gonna go ahead. We just had our last carbon lit. Well, not our last, but that was the last thing we did before we had this. And if you add an activator, you wanna add it to about the center of your pile. All right, here we go. We got our layers. Everything's all intact. Now, the idea was to initially go to the very top. That would, have given us, given a, that would have given us somewhere around 48 inches. It's actually about three and a half feet. So judging by my calculations, I mean, it's basically 43 cubic feet worth of material. You only need 27 to get a cubic yard. So we're considerably more than that. So it's important that you have at least a cubic yard. And what are the reasons why, son? You need at least a cubic yard in order to be able to house enough microbes in order to break everything down. If it's not at least a cubic yard, then it's not enough space for the microbes to sustain the colony, basically. And folks, that's what brings the heat, right? I yeah. mean, that's what we have going on here, folks. It's a microbial process. And if you go over three cubic yards, it could catch fire. There's probably a number of people out there asking, why not just buy compost at the store? Well, there's a whole host of reasons, but I'll just give you one right off the bat. The microbes that you have on indigenous to your property are almost certainly not the same microbes where that compost was made, unless it was right down the street. Use the example that, you know what, if I were at the equator, who would better survive there? An Inuit or a Panamanian? Well, clearly a Panamanian. Same thing if you were in Alaska. Inuit would survive better there. That's why the best compost ever is going to be the stuff that you produce at your own property. That's why we go through this trouble. That's why we make it. Also, there's a number of people out there in record numbers getting into the homestead space. This is something, as you can see, this is something you could put together in your backyard. You could put it together anywhere in the, some of the smallest spaces. Now, as this process unfolds, you're gonna see how we go through that. Now, what's next in the process? We got this made, what are we gonna do? So the next step is to cover it with a tarp so we don't, uh... And that's going to limit how much water is added to the pile if it rains, and it's going to limit the amount of water that's lost through evapor evaporation and stuff like that. And we use this type of cage so it allows proper airflow for the microbes to breathe and everything like that. Um, but the next step is to let this sit for four days, and then on the fifth day, flip it. And then we'll flip it every other day after that. And we're going to show you the entire process as we do it. Before, we tried to stick it all in one video, and I think we only managed to confuse people more. So just like the chicken tractor on steroids, when we do that, we give you a week-by-week -week update because there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on, and a lot of nuanced things that maybe you won't get in a single video. So it's not for a lack of content, folks. We're doing that to maybe answer a ton of questions before they even come up. So that's exactly what we're doing. So let's go ahead and get that tarp. We'll get it going. All right, y'all, there, there it is. Day one in the 18-day compost pile. Now, folks, this isn't a tough process. Now, you may mess it up a few times, just like I did the first few times, but there is nothing like having your own compost, being able to take all these resources. They may be at your place. You may be able to, able to get them elsewhere, but it's not difficult to do. You could refine this stuff, and it, you can make it take longer than 18 days. But in 18 days, we're gonna hit the mark and you're gonna see this stuff make a magical transformation. And the microbes are gonna do 90% of it for us. But you also wanna stick around in another method of making compost, and that's our chicken tractor on steroids. It's an entirely different method, but it's cool and you can do it. So folks, I hope this stuff helps. Till next time, this is Billy, the permaculture pimp daddy and William, the pasture raised pimp, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.